Former President Barack Obama has a warning for President Biden. According to the Washington Post, Obama had a private lunch with Biden in June, where, quote, Obama voiced concern about Donald Trump's political strengths, including an intensely loyal following, a Trump-friendly conservative media ecosystem, and a polarized country, underlining his worry that Trump could be a more formidable candidate than many Democrats realize, end quote. Vanity Fair summed it up with, this headline, Barack Obama is also scared, blah, blah, that Donald Trump could win another term. I uh, bet he is. We all know why. <laughs> we all know exactly why. <laughs> uh, Congresswoman Claudia Tenney of New York said this. President Obama really has a stake in Joe Biden staying there. You know, many people think that he's the scene, he's the guy behind the scenes. Let Joe go, let him get out of this thing without, uh, say, with, you know, by saving face. But back when Biden announced his candidacy in April, Obama tweeted, support, let's get to work. The latest New York polls, uh, New York Times poll has Trump and Biden now in a dead heat. Molly Hemingway is a Fox News contributor and editor-in-chief of The Federalist. Mark Penn is a former Clinton advisor and poll expert. Great to see you both. Molly, I'll start with you. So Obama has gone from let's get to work to let's freak out. Why? I think it, it is a reasonable thing for him to be concerned about. Even the 2020 election was remarkably close with it coming down to about 40,000 votes across three states. And that was during a campaign where Biden had an excuse for why he couldn't be out running a campaign because of COVID. Um, and you had the media suppressing all sorts of stories about the Biden family business, which are now coming to light. And you didn't have the actual you know, track record of what was happening in a Biden presidency, which a lot of Americans feel is not anywhere near where they want to be economically, in terms of foreign policy, in terms of crime, in terms of the southern border, all sorts of issues that now Biden would have to defend. So Obama's right to be concerned, I think. So, Mark, do you think Obama's also right to be concerned from your perspective on, on the left side of the aisle? And if so, what would you do to turn things around? Well, there's no question that this race right now is a toss-up at best. Some polls like mine show Trump a couple of points ahead, others a couple of points behind, the New York Times dead even. Uh, you know, the biggest problem that President Biden has is his job rating is, is low in the low 40s, and his rating on inflation is about 35 percent. So what does President Biden need to come back and have a, a lead instead of a toss-up? A better economy. That clearly is the number one issue. It is the number one deficit that Biden has. He's got to both, I think, move somewhat more to the center to get moderate voters. Look at that huge undecided in this race, even though both candidates are universally known. Says a lot of voters don't know, you know, which one they would choose in this case. But the economy is the big issue that he really has to fix. And he's got a chance that a year from now, the economy will be better and inflation will be lower. So, you know what I, I always I, admire? I, about you. You are, have such transparency around these issues. I mean, you really, and you're a polling expert, so you get that these numbers, they've been around for so long that they're more than just stubborn. Um, my question for you, just to, to put this back on you, Mark, is why can't other Democrats see that? Oh, look, I, I think some are. Look, I think the party is rallying around Joe Biden. You see his numbers going <laughs> up. I well, think that's because he won't sit in. down. Uh, they're they're all in on a, on a, on a, on Biden too. I don't think there's any question about that. But they're also realistic. I mean, that's why mm. they went out with Biden <clears throat> Biden economics. That's why they're defending everything that's going on with Devin Archer and others. That's why they're trying to like push. I think their agenda forward. I, I don't think they're they're just sitting around. Yeah, they're not. But he is. Oh my goodness! In a beach chair. <laughs> 364 days, including today, he has been saying. out of the office and loves to go to the beach. I like the beach, too. Okay, mark your calendars. The first GOP debate is 20 days away, and former Vice President Mike Pence still has not yet made the cut. He says he's confident, though, he will be on that stage. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so you mean to tell me <laughs> everybody made it except for Mike Pence? Made the cut. Oh, he says he's caught. And Asa Hutchinson? I, 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 
I wouldn't have guessed that one. I wonder why Mike Pence hasn't actually made the cut. I wonder why. I doubt I doubt uh, Trump will actually go up there and debate. If I'm Trump, I don't I don't even go up there and debate at this point. I mean, he's so far ahead in in like what? Your only competition is v- Vivek, right? I think that's how you pronounce his name, Vivek, instead of Vivek. How how I've been pronouncing it. Sorry, Vivek. Okay, I'm probably gonna butcher that again at some point. But um, your only serious competition is Vivek. Uh, I don't see Ron a serious competition. His political career is over. Tim Scott's done. He he doesn't seem genuine, in my humble opinion. Nobody else, honestly, I, I'm, I'm not familiar with this uh, Burgum guy. I'll be, I'll be 100% honest. This, this, this guy is new to me. Uh, if anybody can inform me if I should be diving into Burgum or Burgum. I'm assuming it's Burgum. That's the way it looks. Uh, if we should be diving more into him, let, let me know in the comment section, but Vivek is the only serious competition, or I wouldn't even say serious, the only guy that could possibly replace Trump, in my humble opinion, out of this entire lineup, uh, not Asa, not, not Pence, for sure, yeah, nobody else except for Vivek, maybe Bergam, I don't, I don't know the guy, I don't know, y'all let me know in the comment section, but I would assume if he was actually, a great candidate or a good candidate, I, I would have already heard about him, so I'm going with Vivek, so I'm, I'm not hopping on a debate stage if I'm Trump, why, why, but that's just me, well, how, how do y'all feel about it, do y'all think Trump should actually get on stage and debate now, let me know. Confident though, he will be on that stage. I think it'll be about the next week to 10 days uh, that we'll have that support, we've been averaging about a thousand contributions a day, uh, it was stronger frankly over the weekend. Former President Trump has qualified, but still has not committed to showing up. Governor DeSantis, his closest rival in the polls, joined the Faulkner focus yesterday and sounded very confident. I don't think anyone's running uh, on our side that's had as much political success as me. We'll continue to be successful in this campaign. Molly. Continue to be successful. What has gone successfully for you so far in your campaign, Ron? That's my real question. What has gone successfully for you in, during your campaign? Because the last time I checked, since you began your campaign, you've only gone down. Like, that that sounds to me like leftist delusional talk. We'll continue to be successful. Not acknowledging the fact that you've been declining the entire time. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. I don't know. Well, even if uh, former Vice President Mike Pence is able to eke onto the debate stage, he really does have some trouble here. I think the Real Clear Politics polling average has him at fourth and falling in Iowa. I think he's at sixth and falling in New Hampshire. He's at seventh or eighth and falling. He's really not resonating with the Republican voter, which is interesting because he's the former Vice President of a very popular administration, and you know he's got to be asking some questions about whether this is really in his or anyone's interest to run and people who love him and are close to him should be talking to him about whether this makes sense for him to be running this uh, just real quickly why do you what what are the problems for him that you see molly well you saw it even after this incredible attempt to imprison the top republican uh, by jack smith and joe biden's department of justice Vice President Biden actually came out and defended that action. That is not where the Republican voters are. They are Mike very Pence. unified in their concern about the weaponization of our intelligence agencies and law enforcement agencies, about the two standards of justice, about the complete, like, you know, they're literally trying to imprison former President Donald Trump. And if you can't speak out against that, you're really not going to go far in the Republican primary. You know, I, I'm looking at something, and I want to ask you about this, Mark. So the former vice president has hit the polling threshold for the first RNC debate right here on Fox. But he, and he said he doesn't quite have the donor support. He says he's rocking about 1,000. So what does that mean that voters have on their minds? They just don't want to part their cash, part with their cash. Not for him. Well, it means that he doesn't really have the kind of grassroots level support uh, that he would really need. Look, if you get 
an opportunity to be vice president for four years and you don't have a, a real base in the Republican Party, his candidacy at this point is, is on obvious life support. It doesn't realistically have the kind of base that he should have been able to build up, but 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 didn't. So so look, I, I think you're, you're when I look at the numbers here, this Ramaswamy move is really incredible, putting him in there with DeSantis and Scott as the as the candidates with a realistic constituency at this point. All right. Unfortunately, I have to let you both go. I want to keep you, though. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Uh yeah, they're all shaking in their boots. Now, see, now, now the truth is starting to get revealed a little bit. The other day, we checked out a clip of CNN panicking. Um, what was that? Uh, it was a short that I dropped of CNN panicking. You know, saying, oh, well, I don't know how strong of a candidate he is. He's not a good candidate. I don't know why Joe Biden is running. Well, you got mainstream media, leftist media at that, saying that about you, you know you're in trouble. When you have the former president, Barack Obama, like, hey, yo, hey, hey Trump, hey, that guy's serious. He's serious. You know, like, you know you're in trouble. They can only hide the truth for so long. They can only do it for so long. And, you know, watching them panic and run around like chickens with their heads cut off over this next uh, uh, year and some change is going to be fun to watch, to say the least, because they all know what's coming. Every single one of them, at least the heads, right? The, the establishment guys and gals, they know what's coming. They aren't stupid. They're very smart individuals. That's why they got to the position that they got to. That's how they're part of the, the a, a part of the establishment. You know, that's why they're heads of the. They they know what's coming, and they know they can't stop it. They could try throw indictment after indictment after indictment on Uncle Trump, but that's only backfiring on them. So I think their only hope is throwing Trump under the jail. <laughs> Because even if he's in jail, which I doubt that that would happen, even if he's in there, we all still vote on Uncle Trump. <laughs> and how glorious would that be? Oh, yeah, we've thrown Trump in jail. Oh, Trump is president again. <laughs> you know, a month before the election, they managed to throw Trump in jail. You see all the left to celebrate. Yeah. Trump is in jail and then night after the election it's announced Donald Trump is the next president of the United States of America <laughs> oh man I kind of want that to happen I kind of want it to happen that would be hilarious watching them all celebrate and then watching the the, the smiles on their faces get wiped away in an instant Hey, but as always, y'all let me know what you thought about this one in the comment section below. Like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.